Hey, Dr. Auer here. Um, today's video, I want to introduce you to your elimination diet. Now, you've received um, a document that is outlining kind of like in a simplified form, eat this and don't eat this. And some of you might be like, okay, I can do this, no problem. Some of you might be a little bit overwhelmed because we're seemingly removing a lot of foods from your diet. So today's video, I want to dedicate to the elimination diet and kind of explain to you why we're eliminating foods and how we can maybe scale this diet a little bit for you so that it's a little bit more pun intended digestible. All right, so the first thing in the diet is the food elimination process. And it's really important to note that the types of foods that we need to eliminate is gonna vary greatly in regards to you, your specific biochemical physiological presentation currently and your symptoms um, and where you are in your health journey. But when we start an elimination diet, in my world and when we're working together, there are three foods that um, I call them the non-negotiables. And those three foods are gluten, dairy, and processed sugar. Those are three things that I'm going to require you to stop eating. We're gonna get into more detail and where, they're, where, where you can find some of these foods. You know, sometimes they're a little bit hidden specifically with gluten. Processed sugar, dairy is a little bit more straightforward. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, but in the diet handout that I received, there's a lot of other foods that we're removing. And yes, we are. So depending on if you are an autoimmune patient, have chronic inflammation, a lot of medications, a lot of symptoms, it's really difficult to figure out what's going on and why and everything else, you might be a candidate where we need to get into the list of the negotiables. So there are foods, and these are all foods that I have found can be inflammatory to the system. So we have gluten-free grains, nightshades and nuts, legumes and eggs, and all these foods can be an issue for patients that have a lot of chronic inflammation or a lot of autoimmune presentations. So if you are an, an, an autoimmune patient or you have a lot of chronic pain and a lot of inflammatory you know, um, presentations like anxiety and depression and skin issues um, and many, many brain fog and other elements, and you just want to kind of hit the ground running and get results faster by modifying your diet, then I recommend that you actually avoid all these foods in addition to the non-negotiables. However, if you're a patient where you're like, okay, look, that's just too overwhelming for me. I don't think I can remove all those foods or, you know, I'm not that bad. I, I'd like to see if I could do this at a step-by-step -step approach. Then I would say, look, um, let's keep in some of these foods. Um, you know, typically, you know, if we're looking for some weight loss, we want to maybe just re to make sure we do not include the gluten-free grains because grains, again, more carbohydrate content will may potentially keep you from losing weight. But if your goal is more weight loss, you know, maybe the nightshades and the eggs and the nuts and things like that are no problem. So it really depends on where you're at, okay? So again, elimination diet, non-negotiables, gluten, dairy, processed sugar, the negotiables. And this is where we're gonna get um, together in a lifestyle and nutrition consultation, either with me personally or a health coach that works for me. Um, and we're gonna go over what diet will work best for you and which foods do we need to avoid? Three or all of them or something in between. Now, once we got some clarity on the foods that we eliminate, another really, really important part to diet and elimination diet is your blood sugar. So it's really important to note that if we have your blood sugar over time, that the body likes to keep your blood sugar in a perfect world as controlled as possible, okay? So it's really important to know that your body likes your blood sugar in a very, very, very tight, you know, and optimized way. So we don't have crazy blood sugar spikes and we don't have crazy blood sugar drops. Now, a lot of us, this is what our blood sugar looks like on a daily basis. If you find yourself eating food and you get tired crave coffee or crave sugar, you probably are having some insulin resistance where your blood sugar crashes and now we get all these cravings. 
if you find yourself turning into Godzilla and breathe fire or crash and burn, if you can't get a meal after three or four hours, we probably have some reactive hyperglycemia components. And it's really important to note that these highs and lows put a lot of strain on your body. Your adrenal glands, when your blood sugar crashes, have to release cortisol, which is a stress hormone for a process called gluconeogenesis to bring your blood sugar back up. Your pancreas, if your blood sugar is high all the time, which it is for a lot of us, has to release a hormone called insulin. And insulin is a chauffeur that shuttles your glucose molecule to the cells. If we have a diet like this all the time, we put a huge strain on our adrenal glands and our stress handling system, and most of us are too stressed that in general, but it also puts a huge strain on our insulin system. And if that's the case, it puts a huge strain on our endocrine system. So it's really, really important when we start to address your diet that we try to take a strain off these, um, off these you know, um, endocrine components, your insulin and your cortisol, but also that we really make sure that we try to get your blood sugar as balanced as possible. Because if your blood sugar is going up and down like that, you're not gonna be the most balanced person emotionally, cognitively, and also gonna have difficulty maybe uh, losing weight. And also just from a hormonal perspective. So super important that we get your blood sugar balanced. So this is why what you're gonna see in the recommended diet that we focus on an overall low carb diet. And if we do allow fruit, they have to be low glycemic. We wanna increase your fiber and we wanna make sure that we have adequate amounts of protein and fat. Now this is really important. There's no diet that fits all. Some people do well with a high protein, high fat diet. Some people don't do well with a lot of protein and fat. So this is something that we have to figure out for you. And this is the process that you're gonna be going through in your lifestyle nutrition consultation. So I hope this video was helpful to kind of just break down the elimination diet a little bit, why we're doing what we're doing, decrease inflammation, balance your blood sugar, and start to get your system back towards it needs to be. All right, we'll be talking to you soon. Latest in your lifestyle nutrition consultation.